Is San Francisco dying? Oh my god. Okay. So, just small little like shorts and just from news articles and on a superficial level, Elon saying San Francisco has fallen, stuff like that. Whole Foods and Nordstrom officially are closing down their stores in San Francisco because of public safety and worker safety. The Oakland A's and Oakland could not find an agreement to stay. So does that mean Oakland now lost all three pro teams? And is their identity still, what does that mean for Oakland? So yeah, it's, it's hard to dissect. And again, with Silicon Valley and San Jose, it's just not as it's, it's no longer a hype. So I kind of want to, again, I'll expand on San Francisco. There's a lot of crap going on. Um, I think on the outskirts of San Francisco, it's still very nice. I, just was, I was in Daly City uh, two weekends ago, and it's still very nice to go around. But within the heart of San Francisco itself, it was it it does feel very empty. Like it just my uh, one of my friends has a restaurant in the Tenderloin, uh, Bodega SF. So I'm gonna shout him out right, real quick because that food is bomb. Um, but going there, just walking around, there's a lot more homeless. Felt a little more unsafe walking around in the evenings. A little bit more, I have to watch like watch my back so I could see where that's going. And then during the day when I was just exploring. Stop on that part right real quick. Yeah. Why do you feel like you need to watch your back? It's just a lot more break-ins with, within just like cars, just a lot more muggings, especially with um, the Cash App founder getting stabbed. But yeah, looking back into it, doing more research again, but maybe it was a dispute within an, another colleague but i was like holy crap like what what is just going on within just san francisco and feeling like a bit unsafe it's mainly i don't want to say it's a homeless because that that doesn't it's just it just feels more eerie just the vibe just vibe checking it it just feels more eerie it feels more just i'm gonna get mine and i don't care who i'm gonna who i'm gonna go through you know what i mean it's just like i'm just gonna get it like there was a short of just on YouTube shorts. There were just like break-ins of cars, just like all down the street and people just getting desperate. Is it economic downturn or things getting more desperate where I feel like I can't, am I going to, is it going to be this time walking around the street? It wasn't, it's not in the sense of homeless or stuff like that. It's just that eerie feeling. You just can't, I just can't explain it of like, what is the factors of it? Maybe the less, is there's a less police presence but yeah, that was just—it's just a collective of things where you just feel very like I just don't feel safe. Eerie. Yeah, and and I think you know just at, how you started off the segment about like Whole Foods. I I just googled it because I totally missed that one. <laughs> I I didn't realize it's also one, considered one of their flagship stores. Um, mm-hmm. in in the city being closed, and then that that Nordstrom right also it's like five stories in the middle of Westfield. Um, so it's it's like a significant monument to to be closing down. You know when you when you're thinking of so like when when you were saying about it feels like people are just trying to get their own kind of reminds me of like New York City, like New York City. People are like, you know, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. It's go, go, mm-hmm. go. Hustle, hustle, grind. I don't feel like I always have to watch my back when I'm walking down the streets of New York. Do you think there's a reason why like that same vibe can kind of exist or or that same, let's say, motto exists within San Francisco, but the vibe itself feels so unsafe? Oh, I know. Which, I I. Walking around, I do feel safe like walking around like New York, like overall. Um, I feel like overall New York over I don't have see a lot of news, so correct me. But New York NYPD doesn't really have much negative stigma. I think that might be one just because one I just and it always has a pride of like having a police presence around every corner if you work around the bigger cities and they do a lot a lot of beat cops or uh, walking around and stuff like that and their stigma of it hasn't really been like anything abrupt or rough so maybe that might be your presence i think people are so just focused and getting their own in the sense of like the hustle that they probably won't stop and think and do anything in my opinion <laughs> is that they're so distracted on building something but for San Francisco, I think it's more of a survival thing than it is a survival desperation versus building. It's actually a really good point. The 
they could they could both have that similar motto but one mm-hmm. feels like you're actually gonna get trampled versus the other one is you're kind of doing your own thing in order to yeah. get to that that end destination so i just googled real quick on of course this is wikipedia so there might be some mm-hmm. swag in the numbers here mm-hmm. so new york city in 2023 as of january had 33,000 sworn officers okay that, that's a lot but i mean also mm-hmm. there's millions and millions of people in that small little manhattan area mm-hmm. um so they're they're the largest police department in the United States. San Francisco is 17th, um, where they have as of October 2022, 1,900 officers. Oh wow! So we're talking of a magnitude of, I don't know, 30x, 33k, yeah, 33k, <laughs> uh, 15x, like... 15x. Let's say 15x difference um, in number of officers. So you, you're totally spot on with. You know, it feels like New York has, you know, more. They, they do. Absolutely. Yeah. They have more. I mean, looking at this, Boston has more than San Francisco. Um, Phoenix has more than San Francisco. Dallas has more than San Francisco. Las Vegas has more than San Francisco. Um, so, yeah, from a police force standpoint, definitely, I there's basically no police. So, like, it, next time you're in San Francisco and you see, like, three police cars stopping someone. <laughs> yeah, for someone going through a red light and they're like, it's like three officers or, like, you know. 13% of their workforce. Um, yeah, you can, you can always think about that. That's wild. Also, I, I didn't know that there was that big of a difference. Yeah, and also I forgot about this happening too. Just again, this is outside San Francisco, but even San Jose within the Bay Area, that big like Tri-Cities that one of the police commission or police higher-ups were, um, were the ones distributing fentanyl <laughs> and the whole drug ring. And then you have even more distrust in the police force in the Bay Area. So it's it's hard. And I think that's that was a big aspect, again, on the safety. But I also want to expand. I'm not sure if you have anything else on there. But I have one topic about Westfield uh, thinking about selling, um, selling off its lease in 2024 in San Francisco. And that was written in 2022. So if you want to double-click more on the police stuff, I could pivot into into the Westfield aspect of why San Francisco is declining. I don't know. I think, go ahead, go for it. So besides just the safety aspects, police force, even Westfield, the mall, when you just go off Powell street, the big mall, you could just enter through. And back in like when I was doing some research on SF gate, it was April 12, 2022 Westfield is likely to sell off at downtown San Francisco center in 2024. So they already, in 2023, they're already priming, like, I am for sure getting out of here. And a Paris-owned company just wants to pivot more on, quote-unquote, higher-end cities. So if San Francisco is no longer a city, a desirable destination, what does that even mean now? Yeah, like, what what is San Francisco at this point? What is San Francisco? Yeah, it's it's a hard one. I do wonder if maybe that's maybe that's one of the drivers of them not renewing their lease is yeah. if you know that the owner of the mall is about to churn there's there's risk in being a tenant in this building not knowing what the future mm-hmm. of it might hold yeah yeah i mean dude ever since i moved out of san francisco and and by san francisco i mean like the bay area in general yeah there's no reason to go back like there's, i mean uh, no sure i could come visit you yeah you know not not yeah, hating thanks, on it's it okay. i'd rather go to seattle at the moment <laughs> yeah i was gonna I, I was thinking that exact same thing like i was having a conversation with like some family members and they were like are you ever gonna come back to the bay i was like i'll go back to the bay for like one of my buddies but half the time he's flying to me anyways and it's probably a better time so there's no reason to go to san francisco but there's nothing to do i feel like there's nothing to do in the bay area anymore like there's food i'll give it to you Seattle's food scene is significantly worse than the San Francisco Bay Area <laughs> food scene. I do miss okay, the food I, there. I think LA is still better than than both. I mean, you were saying what does San Francisco <laughs> have? LA, yes, I, trumps that as well. But okay, but outside of that, okay, the weather, but with climate change, we're a downpour. I feel like I was living in Seattle. And what's wrong with that? You don't like rain? There's nothing wrong with that. I just felt like I might as well just move to Seattle. <laughs> oh, well, you know, real estate up here is cheaper. Come on through. Uh, I know, right? Gosh. But yeah, what are, your, what are your thoughts on just kind of hearing this information on where San Francisco is headed? Is is it a destination that people want to be at and stay at nowadays? As of right now, it's because of tech and also 
COVID, people are working from home. So you have empty offices. So what are they going to do that? What is this for an office or for any big city? What's what are they? How are they going to repurpose these office buildings for when majority of companies are now remote? And a few of them are still mandating go in an office. I mean, looking at the office space and looking more into tech, Salesforce Tower, named literally after Salesforce, Salesforce is getting rid of that tower. And so, yeah, there's going to be a lot of vacancy when it comes to office space. And if you look in the real estate space, converting office space into living space at times can be super, super difficult, right? Just, I mean, if you think about it, most offices have like one bathroom area and then the rest of these mm -hmm. like super shallow walls, like you have to repipe everything to now bring in multiple individual bathrooms, multiple individual individual showers you, it. you really yeah have to do project. kitchens and that's a huge infrastructure like thing especially if you're like hmm am i actually gonna make a return on this um i so okay clicking back just a little bit so san francisco if i think about it or the san francisco bay area a big driver what makes it super attractive is silicon valley mm -hmm. i think there's been a shift right when it comes to silicon valley one tech isn't doing so hot right now in terms of just like revenue, everything like that. There, there's a shift in the way tech companies are growing. Um, before kind of the correction, it was grow at all costs, even if it's not profitable and just mm -hmm. go, go, go. I, it stimulates a ton of jobs, tons of over hiring. You're not looking at like the books, right? So creates this like little fluff in the market of like, hmm, who is actually doing well or not doing well? So there's there's been that correction, which we, we've seen with all the layoffs. Additionally, I think it's kind of hard because in a way, Silicon Valley is the OG location for the, the startup scene, but there's a number of areas that are definitely give the, giving them a run for their money, right? New York has their startup scene. My, Miami's Austin. kind of come out of nowhere. Austin. Is Colorado, um, is Colorado one of them? No. I actually don't know if Colorado is. I mean, there's a small scene up here in Seattle. I mean, that's a byproduct of Microsoft and Amazon running around. Mm -hmm. Um, you have Silicon Beach or Silicon Beach down in um, what is that? Uh, Santa Monica in Los Angeles. Um, so th there's other places where at the beginning, if you wanted to do tech, you had to go to Silicon Valley. Yeah, and with you know 2020 and the way it happened, people are now a little bit more accustomed also to having venture calls remotely versus like we need to do this in person you can't do this not in person mm -hmm. kind of thing where you know people would have to fly across the u.s just to have this like 30 minute meeting with a vc i mean maybe it's good like like okay what, what's the good side of this i i brought up in the sense of again if everything's going down for cost of living can drop in the sense of it's affordable again yeah it's just thinking on a very small scale cost yeah. of living could be more affordable now because now there's no hype it's just now every day and you still get California weather. So it's not going to be as expensive as it was, but it can still be expensive. But a ba a fighting chance versus crap, I'm, I'm scrapping by. Yeah, I think that's the first thing that comes to my mind too, is it might help with, you know, air quote, housing crisis that's happening in the San Francisco Bay Area because people might move elsewhere. Those people might be of, you know, the bloated tech salary, like overpaid tech salaries. And so the competition might be a little bit lighter. I think that might be like the only thing really. It'd be interesting to see what markets or if someone's listening to this and they know of like an industry that's just booming that we're totally not, you know, not actually that hitting. missing. Yeah. Like maybe, <laughs> maybe fashion is really making a come up. I don't know. Um, it, yeah, I mean, is. we don't know like all these other industries. Maybe there's something sleeping out there that we're, we're just totally missing, but in the grand scheme of things, it also doesn't help that media just fuels one narrative, right? Like people just kind of like latch onto one thing and then they keep running with it. it some, this, some people are like out. Gotham city is the, is San Francisco. Watch <laughs> out. So I feel it, man. Oh my God. Where's our Batman. I was going to say, I just can't wait to see <laughs> Batman come through and I hope he has a cool ass car. But I'll probably get lost on all the turns in San Francisco anyway. So True. crap. He'll go down a one way street and. <laughs> done yeah. oh you're done i'm sorry i'm not saving you i turned the wrong way <laughs> it's a wrap oh man 